Welcome back to more Premier Drafts in the Midnight Hunt. And we're just going to get to it. So I found that in blue-green decks, um, my last deck was blue-green. It did not have enough removal, and that caught, that was very costly. Um, I ended up losing to a bomb that I just couldn't deal with. Um, but other than that, like I think I've got a lot of this format wrapped up. The thing is, I almost always end up drafting blue. And that is... Probably a weakness. Yeah, that's a weakness, but it's also a thing that, you know, I'm not sure if it's a weakness of the format or as me as a player, but nonetheless, like, we still do fine with our... We do good with our decks. It's just, like, we've only drafted blue effectively, so... Yeah. We're hoping for the best, and we're hoping that this person fills in the seat so we can continue playing. Anyways, yeah, this format, I do enjoy this format. It's definitely a format that if it's along, if it's around for too long would be an issue. They're planning to have a special um, draft format, which is two different, um, it's this format plus the one after it, both Innistrad sets together. And I'm actually very excited for that. I think, th like, this is missing pieces. And if that so finds the pieces, then that's awesome. All right. Oof. So... Fateful Absence, like, it kills their biggest threat, so it might be good, but a lot of the threats have Disturb, or effects like that, so that makes it not as good. Defend the Celestis is a great combat trick, but I'm not sure how many times you're going to be the combat deck. Sacred Fire, I do want to play a Sacred Fire deck one of these days. It seems like an amazing card, but forces a dual color. Um... Like, I might just pick a common, like Soul Guide Grift or Gale Drifter. I just like these cards a lot. Um, Covetous Cut Purse. You know, we'll play Covetous Cut Purse. Um, I, I feel like there's not really many times where you're going to attack and it's going to deal damage and not kill. Like, black is not the color with combat tricks, so you're not going to run into it often. But, I mean, it's a 5 mana 2-2 Death Toucher with flying that you get to play from your grave. And we immediately get a Castaway to continue this Disturb. I think we have to go Infernal Grasp first, though. Um, they took a rare, and they left the most insane pack. Oh my gosh, this is literally... Do I go Blade Step Scab, or do I go Infernal Grasp? I think with this, blue-black is going to be so heavily fought over that I can't go it. Like, there will be... Unblinking Observer will be the only card that makes it through this. I think that's it. I think we are going to get Morning Patrol or something that's not blue-black, because everything's going to be taken. This, So from our deck pack that wasn't that good to a pack that's absolutely insane. I think, yeah, we go Infernal Grasp. Alright. Do I want... I can go with Static Awakener, just kind of, like, lean on black. Or, let's see. So someone picked a common after this. Could just be that there was an Organ Hoarder. Could just be that worked with their colors. Um... So I could go Archivist. I do like Archivist. As I said, I like blue. Um, Ecstatic Awakener, I hear, is really good. And it keeps me within my colors. But I think Overwhelmed Archi Archivist is good enough that I should just pick it and um, be happy. And Ecstatic Awakener... I mean, Ecstatic Awakener is really good. Mm. This is where it becomes tough. So here's what I'm going to go with. Because, Blades, because of all the insane cards in the previous pack... Blue is going to be fought after. We They even have an organ hoarder. So I'm going to go black and let other people be blue. Um, it could be a bad idea, but I think that's the path. All right. And with here, it's either the Defend the Celestis, go black green, or the Lunark Veteran, go black, black white. I think that's the two picks, really. Um, black white likes to sack Awakener a lot more. Lunark Veteran is a card I'm up for. But this is our second se th Defend the Celestis. Um, we don't know how open these other colors are is the main issue. Um, I'm going to try the Lunark Veteran. Um, the Defend the Celestis, I'm happy to pick later. We could get Flare of Faith from this deck, from this pack later. That would be nice. Eden Alive or Vengeful Strangler. We already have one Sacrifice Outlet. I think the removal is just that good. Um, Ventral Stranger is fine, but this is, like, 
amazing removal, sacrifice fodder, wants sacrifice fodder, want sacrifice fodder. Like, yeah, I think we go with the eaten alive, possibly the vengeful strain where it comes back around. But yeah, look at those black. All right. Bereaved Survivor can bring back the Lunark Veteran and the Ascetic Awakener when it attacks. Blessed Defiance is actually good in this sort of deck. Um, yeah, these three are all good cards. The Uncommon Whites being around tells me that white is very open. I'm going to go with a Bereaved Survivor first, because it goes with Sacrifice Triggers a lot better. Um, if I could attack, I Flare of Faith or something like that. Um, it just allows us to keep re-triggering things and putting a lot of pressure on board. So I'm going to go with that. Search Party Captain or Gaviny Trapper? Um, this is not as easy as it sounds. I'm going to go Search Party Captain, but we don't have that aggressive. I'm not sure our deck's going to be aggressive enough for it, but I do like the card draw. Um, Gaviny Trapper would be great. No way out. I'm happy to have one of. The Sunset Revelry is just a little iffy. All right. Now this is where these beautiful pictures kind of get in the way because it's hard to tell that this is the only white card i'm happy with a two two mana two two and um for coven one we're not really getting coven much but a two drop is perfectly acceptable in this sort of deck all right soul guide griff i think is where i want to be sacred fire be getting around is pretty nice to know but i'm gonna go with the soul guide griff um i just really like this card because it's a three four five mana three four flyer this is big enough to finish the game out. This is big enough to win you the games when you need to. Um, Blood Pact or Sun Gold Barrage? Um, so Blood Pact is the card draw I need, but then I need Flash in the Flash to play it, really. Sun Gold Barrage, I'm happy having one of. Blood Pact, I'm not sure if I even have one of. So that was the distinction. Alright. I'll sideboard Hedwitch, Hedwitch's Mask. Because I might be able to put on the Brief Survivor or the Cattle Grove Witch to activate Coven. Stuff like that. Flare of Faith is great. Flare of Faith is a card I like in these sort of decks. Vampire Interloper I don't like, but fits the deck. Another sideboard, Hedge Witch. Alright, wrong colors. Blood Tithe Collector. Alright. Gavany Silversmith is also a good card. Um, another Overworld Archivist for those guys. But Blood Tithe Collector... Um, you know, as I said, I like five, Soul Guide Grip because it's just a 5-mana 3-4 flyer. This is a 5-mana 3-4 flyer that could discard them a card in the late game where they're only holding up threats, where they've played all of their lands. Blood Tide Collector is amazing because of that. Alright. And we get rewarded for a color combination with Can't Stay Away. Um, that actually allows us to attack with Brief Survivor, then get the back Brief Survivor afterwards. Like, that... That is exactly where this deck wants to be. The Morning Patrol is also great if that comes back around. Ron Reunion, I'm happy having one of. But, yeah, that can't stay away. It's huge. Someone's getting a second Bladesmith Scab, and they are a lucky, lucky person. So the question now, do I want the Diagraph Horde, or do I want the Flare of Faith? So our humans, we have six, six of our nine creatures are humans. Um, Flare of Faith, I will say, is a very powerful effect. Um, I think I'm going to go with the Diagraph Horde first, because the Flare might make it around, and the Diagraph I don't think will. Alright. And yeah, we committed to this deck really early, but like we've been showing everyone up that um, blue is wide open. Blue, I think, is going to be fought after. And if someone ever gives up, says, okay, I can't play my colors, they're going to fight for blue. So, like, we basically have left our colors open as far as I know. Uh, black is going to be fought for, but I'm happy being white, splashing black. Like, we literally have two cards on our sideboard, both playable if we must. We, our colors are open, even if they're not the most, they're the, even if they're not the most open or the best colors. Um, Vampire Interloper, I might not want it. I don't think it's worth a splash. I would need to grab Evolving Wilds first. I don't think it's worth a splash. We're training the Homestead Courage. I'd rather have Homestead Courage. Um... We do have a lot of playables, but, like, we have no red, and I think red's being fought for. The fact that red-black isn't being fought for is absurd to me. Um, evolving Wilds, like, I'd have to pick Evolving Wilds first. I'd rather just have the Homestead Courage for this deck. I'm going to hate myself for that later, but I think I'm happy for it now. Um... And now they prove that red-black is open if I want to splash into it. But 
I think we're just going to stick with what we committed to and not splash in red. Because, you know, it's a non-green three-color splash. It becomes a lot harder. We haven't seen jack-o'-lanterns really come around. So, alright. I think this is a can candle trap or a static awakener. Um, let's look at our creatures. One, one, two, 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 a three. A lot of twos and a lot of threes. So it's either the candle trap or the static awakener. Um, I think I'm actually gonna go with the ecstatic. Um, we already have an eaten alive. We, like, we have a, we love sacrificing for bereaved survivor and stuff like that. I think, yeah, the ecstatic awakener is just better than the, than the, um, candle trap right now. It's definitely debatable, but I'm going with it. All right. Siege zombie? Give ourselves a... I think we have enough sacrifice outlets that the siege zombie becomes unnecessary. And for two drops, like, one, two. Okay, that's why we picked the siege zombie. And as I picked the siege zombie, I looked to my left and realized there was other two drops. Anyways, kill spell. So I made a mistake there. I made a mistake there. I probably should have picked the two mana three one. Or something of that need Or the unruly mob. Um... Nonetheless, we got Olivia's Midnight Ambush. We'll be okay. Every single card we've drafted so far is playable in this deck. So our colors are open. We are 4560. And the one we're 45 in is the one that I thought we wouldn't be fighting over as much. Like, the 60 is there because I thought I had to fight for it. Alright. Um, rare draft. We're not playing that. We're not splashing green. Duress, if the meta calls for it, but I don't think the meta does. Nice to have that cool little art. Don't don't need more than two headwitch maxes, anyways. So, if for whatever reason we have sideboard concerns, like we have to just revamp this deck, it's good to have access. If we could change the this deck, nope. I just wanted to change the picture while I waited. Alright, Flare of Faith, I love for these kind of decks. We're low to the ground, we punish. Jack-o'-lantern would have been cool, but it's not where we are anymore. Yeah, tell someone that red's open. Again, tell someone that red's open. Alright, Gavany Dawn Guard. Like, how many hit? Yeah, like, let's see, how many hits does it have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. It has nine hits already. Alright, we're not getting that Diagraph Horde around, that's okay. We'll probably end up picking up the Unruly Mob, is my guess, on the way around. And that's something we have to be okay with. Alright, Morning Patrol? Or Blessed Defiance. So this becomes the question. So we have 14 creatures, 8 non-creatures. We already have 2 Flare of Faiths. The Blessed Defiance is really good in a lot of situations. The Morning Patrol is another 3-mana creature that can be sacrificed. What am I doing on turn 3? Gavany Dawnguard, Arrogant Outlaw. Yeah, it's either the Blessed... I think there is an argument for the Blessed Defiance with the way this deck is panning out. Um, yeah. I'm gonna go for it. Alright. Another Flare of Faith. Another Diagraph Horde. We already have two Flare of Faiths. I could... If I grab a third, I basically am saying, hey, we can rip out the Diagraphs. We can rip out the Soul Guide. We can literally just be on the ground hyper aggro. Otherwise, we get a second horde. We have two 3-4 flyers and two 3-4 ground turtles. Hmm. I mean, it's not Cathartic Pyre. It's just flat out, it's not Cathartic Pyre. I'll pick the Flare of Faith, but I could be punished for that. I recognize that. Hobbling Zombie is fine. It's a sacrifice trigger. It's 
a zombie. It's all that. Ritual Garden, Morcut Behemoth. Um, 5 mana, 7, 6 Menace as our finisher. Or 3 mana, 3, 2. 1, 2, 3, 4... Five, three drops already. So I think the Ritual Guard... Like, it does have lifelink. Um, so I can usually attack with it. Flare of Faith gains six life. I'm going to put that in my sideboard for now. All right. I think we're at a point where we can Cathar's Call and just Flare of Faith to protect it. So I'm going to try that out. See how that fares. I do like my um, th my flyer, my three four flyers over my ground bodies, so I think I might pick the soul guy grip. No, ritual guardian. Just get make sure we have that perfect curve if we want it. All right, uncommon draft. That's all this is. So this is sanctifier. I mean, if I need the three drop, but we're at twenty seven cards. Morning patrol made it around. I think that beats out the um, ritual guardian. Yeah. Figure out what we cut. I think we do cut the diagraph. We don't need two Sun Gold Barrages. Because Sun Gold Barrage does miss some decks. Yep. The Vampire Interlooper probably gets pulled. Alright. So Static Wakener, I've heard, like, meta-wise, it's actually an amazing card. Because you can attack with two. They can't really block this, so they block the other card, and then you just buff it up, and they're in trouble. Alright. So we have 14 creatures, 11 non-creatures. So I think we're getting rid of a non-creature, then. So we have five combat tricks. Um... As for kill spells, we have one, two, three, four. Alright, so four. And, like, because of this, we can actually start swinging in and actually having Covetous Cut Purse work. Alright, so we have four kill spells and basically 15 creatures that they can't stay away. Um, we don't have enough two drops. That's definitely an issue. We don't have... As many two drops as I want. Not nearly. We have too many three drops of anything. Alright. Well, we're removing one land, and I think we're removing the, um... One of these three drops. Question is which. I think we're getting rid of the Arrogant Outlaw. It doesn't... It's a vampire, so it doesn't synergize with our human side. Like, it doesn't have good sacrifice triggers to go with a stack Awakener. So I think I'm getting rid of the Arrogant Outlaw and a Plains. Alright. 6342. It's good enough. Um, if we do this, then put that back. Oh, it still keeps it. Huh. Well... Can't stay back because we have to keep pressing forward using our combat tricks. Yeah, having only five early game is not very good. That is definitely where I think I'm going to get a lot of damage in this draft. Um, that being said, we have now a lot better kill. We have better kill shots. We have better um, mid game. Like, we have combat tricks. We have cart like cards. E card cycling. Um, basically a card cycle. With the uh, effect. Yeah, I think we can manage. This is definitely a scary deck, but I think this has what it needs. Um, the lack of card draw, I'm going to run out of cards, and then they're going to take me out. That's what I have to worry about. Alright. So, I lack a 2-drop or a 1-drop. But I have Olivia's Midnight Ambush, and I have a Bereaved Survivor that's might be able to tack in and get search party captain active but yeah as i said the lack of two drops and um one drops definitely cut deep into my deck all 
Because, like, right now, it looks like we're kind of going controlling. There's a good reason why I made sure the two five drops both have flying. Because I knew it'd be controlling. I will allow them the opportunity to dissipate my... I'm just ambushing this now. If they want Geist Wave or something, they can be my guest. Alright. That is a very good thing for me. Means, like, if they want to kill my bereaved survivor, they have to work for it. Can't stay awake and bring back bereaved survivor if I ever want to. They have a startle? Or a geist wave? Or a fading hope? Fading hope would hurt. Most of the time. Hmm. All right. Well, we are at 16 lands, and we're still missing at times. I'm going to no block. I can double block, but then, um, like, it puts me in a, lot, in a very vulnerable state. So I can attack with both. Possibly kill the Outland Liberator. Yeah. It allows me to do Blood Tithe shenanigans. They are holding up the Silver Bolt. I want to see how they respond. Because if they take the damage, Blood Tithe kicks in. Um, they'd have to dissipate. Alright, it looks like they're not blocking. If they shoot the bereaved survivor, that's very good for me. Alright, so notice they only have two cards left in hand. And then I get a Blood Tithe Collector then. So now they have to discard one of those two cards. Even if I'm discarding a land, it makes it... Puts them further away from Shadow Beast sighting. Alright, it was a startle. I am blocking the Outland Liberator if they attack with it. Alright. I am going to start by Homestead Courage, the Blood High Collector attack. And then I'm going to um, probably play Can't Stay Away, gain the Brief Survivor back. But we're starting here. No counter spells. Yeah, it looks like they're. Ho oh, duh. They only have one card left. Of course, they're holding up nothing. Bereaved Survivor. There you go. If they attack with the Shadow Beast, I will block with Search Party. Use the... Oh, they're not attacking the Shadow Beast. I have a Blood Tithe Collector. Shot. Alright. Now they're attacking with the Shadow Beast. Yeah, if they attack with Shadow Beast, I will double block and use Blessed Defiance to um, get myself through. I like this. They have to have another combat trick for this to work work well for them, which they have one card in hand. My guess is they do not. All right. So I could turn this into a 4-3. Force them to block with a Harvestite Sentry. Um, I could then bring back the Stack Awakener, which then sacrifices the um, Dauntless Avenger so that it doesn't... Um, oh. Yeah, I like, like that. Um, the question is, do I ha is that how I want to do this? So, like, is that where I want to put it on the 3-2? Or do I want to put it on the 2-2, two, two, say you can't really do much about it? I think I want to attack first. So now I can turn this into a 5-5. Five, five. Oh, 
Oh, I did. I just realized I didn't play a card. All right. Well, I can't stay away to get my awakened demon again if I need it. All right, Brood Reaver. Go. Turn it back today. Yeah, the Awoken Demon, I could can't stay away if they ever kill it. So it's positive for me. Creature with toughness four greater. I'll talk with the Awoken Demon. They might want to double trade. Alright. I still call that good for me. Because now I can, can't stay away. Bring back the Stack Awakener. And I hold up a Sacrifice Trigger. And a Sun Gold Barrage. Awesome. So if they draw a land, I can take out the Shadow Beast. Or I can Sacrifice to get a Static. I think I just take out the Shadow Beast now. Actually, no. And yeah, we're using every single card, but it's worth. Awesome. Yep, we're killing the Liberator first. Now we kill the other half. And I think we just start swinging with everything and basically saying. You have to block and let things die. Because if they don't, like... If I do block, 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 I lose all my cards. They are left with two one-twos. Um, I want to make sure they can't Shadow Beast Sighting, so I'm okay with it. And this also scares them into a combat trick that I might have. Anyways, 16 lands, drawing 9 of them is not very good. That is definitely an issue I'm running into, but... Yep, I want to make sure they lose their Royal Creeper. That was the most important part of all of this. Gain the life's pretty nice, but that was the most important part of all of this. There we are. And we are at a point where both sides have run out of resources. I am at the positive end, and turning to Knight just puts it even more positive. So they'd have... Yeah, exactly. Yep, okay. So we both drew a ton of lands that we didn't want to draw. And I came out the other side better. Okay. I'm going to just really quick check how many triggers Gavany Dawnguard can hit. Because I think that number changed since last I did it. So it's five from the the early game I have. So it's one, so it's one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, so it is nine. So it's a fourth of my, it's a little under a fourth of my deck, and I get, um, I look through a ten, yeah, it's a little under a fourth of my deck, and I look through four cards. Um, so... I think that should work. Alright, so I do have... I hate Mulliganing. I have... I only have two draws out of land. This might have not been the best keep, then. Saved. Saved. The attack with Siege Zombie gets Search Party Captain out of the deal. They'd have to, like, play Denic or something to make this a bad idea. That could be a Denic. If they turn that into a 2-3, I probably don't attack. 
Okay. Change of plans. I get attack. Um, if they don't block, I search card a captain. If they do block, I flare of faith killing it. And then a static awakener. So I could level this up, attack, or I can just Midnight Ambush, kill that. Uh. I like this. If they block the Stack Awakener, I get a kill and buff my guy up. If they block the Siege Zombie, it's a trade I can accept. I could go for the search party captain to draw a land and get myself a candle grove witch. I'll go for it. I missed. Doll I missed. <clears throat> Alright. Well, I think this is fine. I think I attack with both again if they tr if they block there. I I don't like if they block there. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, five mana. There we go. I can't kill it before they get to play that. But I can kill it now. So they saved one mana, but they only have one mana. So the end result is a positive. I am running out of cards, and that is an issue, but they are running out of, um, life, which is a positive. Alright. They didn't buff their silversmith. Yeah, I was gonna say, you have to double block. See if I draw flare. I did not. This is at the beginning of your end step. Okay. So I could put on the Candle Grove Witch to get myself some 1 1 white human creatures. Um, not sure this is going to be the most positive, but it's good enough. This is getting close. And they have more cards, so they are winning the long game. They can't really... At oh. I don't play around board clears. Stars call now would be great, but. Alright, so we don't attack with the hobbling zombie. Because if we attack with the hobbling zombie, they get to turn the beloved baker into a 4 4 with vigilance. Alright. Well, they have five turns to draw an answer. Yeah, I'm not blocking that. Alright, let's see what your last card is. Um, this does not help me play get around flip the switch, so I'm just going to play it. See what it is. It's just a land. Cool. Alright. They now have this draw and the next to try to find a solution. So we actually ran them out and used flyers to seal the deal. Awesome. 
Uh, and this is why I like th three fours with flying over Diagraph Horde. Alright, so this is their last draw. They need a way to deal with the Blood Tithe Collector. Good game. Yeah, what is with... I feel like so many games in this format are won and lost by lands. Don't know why. I have to keep this. I can't mulligan right now. But this is not a good hand. Especially not with an Ivan Gavini Trapper. Alright. The Stack Awakener has a Flare Faith behind it. I'm not attacking in. Ooh, thank you, Candle Grove. Now I could play a land, tack in with both. I threaten the flip, and I if they don't do anything in response, I have Hobbling Zombie. All right. Yeah, I like this. I can flare to kill their creature. I'll just accept with the dealing one damage for free. So I, if I can kill their Covetous Castaway, the problem is I need to kill their Covetous Castaway and then play Soul Guide Grift because that 3-4 flyer is going to be an issue. But my 3-4 flyer can, you know, take it out. The thing is they have lands before we do. So... I'm just going to attack with a Stack Awakener, I think. You have a trick? Awesome. So now I have an... Do I want to put on top or bottom? Um... I'm going to bottom it. I don't have enough creatures to support it. Alright. I could just eat an alive that now. Just bring it straight from... Straight into the grave from where it is now. No blocks. Yeah, they have cards that are really good at leveraging their position. Alright. So I'm going to play a Swamp. I'm going to start by attacking with my Tutu. Their best bet is actually to take the damage, as they did. Then I think I eaten alive the Soul Guide Griff. Either that, or I Morning Patrol and hold up a Flare of Faith. Which I'm not sure if the holding up the Flare is even valuable. I could Soul Guide Griff to block there. I could eaten alive just to exile their Griff and make sure that's not an issue. Um, I think that's a play. I'm just going to eaten alive the Griff. Alright. Next turn. Yeah, my one planes really limits my options here. Yeah, they crack back for some damage. Makes sense. Ah, oh, that's why they attacked with the zombie. They were holding up, it looked like a counter spell, is my guess. I'm going to play the Morning Patrol as well. Um, I'm just going to leave it here. I am happy using the Hobbling Zombie into a Flare of Faith. Right, right. I realize I played this before the combat phase and that was a mistake.
On the morning patrol? Okay. Well, I'm actually pulling out their um, spells now, which is a positive. Um, we are getting low on health. Can't deny that. But... I can attack with the hop with the blood tithe collector, sacrifice the zombie to kill, or I can. Okay, I can attack with a hobbling zombie. Don't block blood tithe collector. Force them to discard that last card. I think that's the play. It does put me in a dangerous situation, but the three four should put me put enough pressure. The ecstatic awakener can block the bait hook. All right. I just realized I'm at one health now. That was not the best idea. Um, ew. That hurts. That hurts a lot. Yeah, I think this guy outplayed me. That's it. They outplayed me. Simple as that. More of, I didn't play well, perhaps, but... Give myself the life I can. You're all right. I'm okay with you having a one-two, if you want it. It makes it so you can't use your d trapper now. And I have to play the Soul Guide Grip just to exile a card in your grave. All right. Not a good spot for me, but it's a spot. And I think they kill me this turn. They tap down with Gavany Trapper. They tap down again. Yep, Gavany Trapper is just a really good card in this format. And I let it stick around. And they even had Nebel Gas behind it. Wow. All right. So yeah, now they tap down the Blood Tithe. And they have Lethal Airborne as well as on the ground threats. Well done, my opponent. I played myself a lot, and that was bad, but... My opponent also just had a good curve, knew what they were doing, played well. Alright. I made some mistakes there. Alright. Lunark Veteran into Hold Up Infernal Grasp. Into a land for morning patrol and hobbling zombie. We've got three draws out of land, and we got we got two plays until we get it. If I play Slowgurk, I'll take him out. They have a startle in hand. I'm just gonna kill that now. Plays good on curve. Um, means I don't have to deal with the flying threat. This is probably sus. I don't care. Ah, come on. And then I get a Soul Guide Griff to remove the Shadow Be Sign from their deck, so I played on curve, played strong. Killing the 2 2 might have been a little too aggressive, but we'll be fine. How many creatures in the grave? Two. All right. Okay. So the question is, do I mill a creature to prevent the death bonnet from flipping, or do I, I, I flip the shadow beast? 100%. I can find a solution to the death bonnet. Or I could just fly over it. 
Next turn, I have uh, Death Toucher. They can't attack this turn, because I have a 3-4 to block it. And now I have a 2-2 with Death Touch to block it. Many other things turn out. Alright. No need. We win this race, I think. Yep, and that really helps us win this race. I get a hold of a flare of faith to kill the shadow beast, and the hobbling zombie trades with the death bomb and sprat pipe, basically. And yeah, just all this life gain, all this incremental life gain. Adds up. So yeah, they always exile my creatures before they exile their own. This is a human, right? Yep. Is that last card a combat trick? No, I'm assuming that's actually a Shadow Beast. You're just saving up that 7 mana for Shadow Beast. Oh, it is a combat trick. Nice. Alright, well. You saved your Shadow Beast, and now you can't play your flip the switch for the other Shadow Beast. So that was actually a negative. Alright. And I think I just play this because if they kill it, um, I get a 2-2 death touch flyer. So they don't even want to attack in with it around. The hobbling zombie stops the death bonnet hulk. The covert cut purse stops damage for a turn. These two threaten lethal in two turns. We're actually pretty positive. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so I'm going to block the Covert Cut Post on the Snarling Wolf to make it so... Yep. Yeah, so they can't use their Shadow Beast sighting. Alright. Obvious blocks are obvious. No combat tricks. I gain two life and get a 2-2 two -two zombie. Base Shadow Beast. I attack for four in the air and make a 5 5 flying death toucher. And we get Cathar's Call, the Soul Guide Drift, I guess? I'm gonna start by attacking with these two. Yeah, I think I actually. I could always call the Luminous Fountain. More innocuous. Alright. They have the Augur. They have the Trigger already. So they get to play the Root Coil Creeper. But they need a Reach Creature. Or else this is it. I am going to wait for them to play their Reach Creature if they have it before I give them the good game, but I think this is a good game. Yep. Alright, and we're taking 8 damage, which leaves us at 9, which leaves us at 10 thanks to Luminous Phantom, and we attack for lethal. And as long as we attack with all, we play around Starl as well. Yeah, I think we attack with 
even the um, decay token, just to get us a, a little bit more life off of a luminous phantom. Bounty wolf, all right, that comes into play. That was a good one. Kill a creeper. Awesome. That's a hand that has no playables. All right. Do I commit with Cathar's Call or with Flare? I think we throw back the Flare of Faith. Um... Cathar Skull just sinks too much into a single creature. Alright. Candlegrove Witch. And this allows me to attack with Candlegrove Witch. Um, not, like... I'm not get blown out if I don't want to. I'm going to play Hobbleed Zombie this turn, and then next turn attack with both. Half Flare of Faith and Search Party Captain available. Like, blocking with Bait Hook Angler is a positive for them, so I'm just not going to play into it. Well, it turns out that the correct answer was actually to throw back a land, because apparently we don't get those. Or we only get those, I guess. Well, when you draw nothing but lands, at least we can equalize. Yeah, 16 land deck drawing, 8, uh, draw, I drew half my lands in a court order of my deck. Sometimes that happens, I guess. Alright, box of the bait hook, that's good for me. If they have a combat trick to blow me out, I just counter combat trick. Alright. Yeah, it, it, it's not worth saving. Now if they have just like a creature bigger than Hook Hot Drifter, there's an issue. Four playables and ten lands. Well, seven lands, but... I don't want to lose the Hobbling Zombie just yet. This is going to end up being a long game if I win it, I think. So, I want to make sure. Nice. I'll make sure I can make it long. Alright, so the Hobbling Zombie would have got three if I wanted to there. Alright. So they attack with all. Deal some decent damage. I'm not blocking a decaying corpse. Alright, they give me a three turn clock to draw a card that's not a land. I'm not sure I can beat it. Five, six, seven, eight. Yeah. We have successfully drawn ten lands and four playables. I need to draw playables. Oh my gosh. And I have to leave Search by Captain up to block the Organ Hoarder. Because that clocks me down one turn faster. And they whatever they kept is better than Revenge of the Drowned. 
Let me just put that into perspective. Whoever they kept is better than Revenge of the Ground, Drown, which currently threatens lethal if they have Revenge of the Drowned. Alright, it's another Organ Hoarder. So that also threatens lethal while applying pressure. Well, not dead yet. I mean, they also drew a lot of lands, but they have they have more card advantage. And that, that's, I think, why blue is so good, because it has cards to just filter through your deck. And lands, for whatever reason, have been devastating here. All right. I'm going to wait for them to attack before I could game them, but yeah, I think this is a game. Yep, 10 lands. I guess 5 playables? But yeah. I also they had a good deck. Like, double Organ Horde, double Revenge of the Drowned. Like, that was a good deck too. So like, you know, get the bad hand and get the good deck at the same time. Works. Works. I'm going first. I have two kill spells into a Morning Patrol. It's playables. Yep, definitely one of the issues is, I mean, we have one drops and two drops, but just not enough of a, do I, yeah, so the question is, do I Lunark Veteran, or do I, um, hold up Olivia's? I think I play the Lunark, because any 2-2 two -two that they play, I don't really care about, and I'd rather gain the one life, it will be an issue next time. And they didn't play a 2-2. Yeah, so if they don't play a 2-2, this is the correct choice every time. Alright. Well, we actually have a kill spell for that tireless hauler. We have combat checks for this position. I would like to draw a land, but I can actually handle not drawing one right now. Alright, so I can attack with both, and when they block, I then Olivia's Midnight Ambush. And now I have a Sacrifice Trigger, as well as a Flare of Faith, so I can attack in and hold up two combat tricks, basically. Which is great. However they block is incorrect. And then they are going to play a land, play their Tireless Hauler, and I get a Infernal Grasp of the Tireless Hauler. Alright. They thought better of it. Now I Infernal Grasp. Alright, so we still 2 for 1. Okay. Not on the most positive 2 for 1, but still 2 for 1. Yeah, I think I'm just going to do this now. Actually, would have liked to leave the planes open. Thanks. But I'll handle it. Alright, so this is no longer a deep... Um... This is no longer a human, so... Alright, so I could Bereaved Survivor and play the Lunark Veteran as an angel. And... Keep moving. Alright. Now I can attack with both of these. Um, the Flare of Faith keeps me around. And the ev even if something dies in the process, the Bereaved Survivor um, acts as a way to act as card advantage. It has to cost two or less. So it would have to be the Awoken Demon, basically. I'd have to lose. Because then it comes back as a Static Awakener. And... Gets a lot of tricks. Alright, they are at 10 health, but they have a lot of value. I see. Okay. I think we just attack with all. 
Yep. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Technically Thren lethal. Alright. So I can flare of faith here, killing that. Um alternatively I could just awoken demon kill here. Um and get the siege zombie ready. And play can't yeah, I can flare faith here, and then can't stay away gain the brief survivor back. Which I think I like. Otherwise, otherwise I flare faith here, kill the hound tamer. Put the woken demon in my graveyard, and get a 3-2 that can, can't stay away later. Yeah, I like this. It's just, it's a law of calculations to realize this is the correct play. Because now the Bereaved Survivor allows me to get that 3-2. I can end up attacking with it, and then using Can't Stay Away when they block later. We're still applying pressure. Yeah, they can't um, Shadow be Sighing because they got the, sw the land. The Rise of the Ants does help them a lot, though. Alright. I think I just attack with a Dauntless Adventure and leave the rest up for Siege Zombie. No, I'm going to attack with a Luminous Phantom as well. Alright. So I could sacrifice with a Sack Awakener, it still has the issue. I gain two life off of this. I get play Static Awakener still. And I get a Can't Stay Away, Bring Back Bereaved Survivor. And I have a trigger with a Static Awakener. Um, they do have a lot of graveyard stuff and seven mana, so we are losing the late game, which is why we want to make this game fast. Um, if they get another mana, they get to play another Rise of the Ants, which is an issue, but we just keep moving. The Tyrus Hauler is now an issue. Crawl from the Cellar. Ooh, that's a bad one for us. That's a really bad one for us. Now I think we actually win through tapping down three creatures eight times. Alright. Now the thing is, this only reveals three cards, so there's a lot of times where that actually misses. I will take four. Or I can 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, block with all, all of these. They kill 2, Brief Survivor flips, attacks, brings back the Siege Zombie. They are tapped out. We know that they don't have any tricks. Um, actually, I actually like that. Kill the Tireless Hauler. And then they just leave the Dauntless Avenger around. Which becomes an issue for them later. Alright. Hobbling Zombie gets me some leverage. Alright. So we're going to have to Siege Zombie. Um, do that attack again. This time bring back this Siege Zombie with Can't Stay Away probably. Alright. They're getting rid of the Siege Zombie now. So the Siege Zombie is not a win condition. Oh, the Can't Stay Away is gone. They took the Can't Stay Away instead. Interesting. 
Alright, so I can attack with Dauntless Adventure. I'm going to attack with everything. The Blessed Defiance acts as a combat trick, as well as the Ecstatic Awakener. Static Awakener. Alright. Alright. So I could sacrifice to make that bigger. Um, they're at very low health. I'm going to sacrifice the Luminous Phantom to make this big enough. And then I have the Blessed Defiance ready for the... Um, to put on the Dauntless Avenger. Yep, that gives me a land. Alright. They still have Coven. Oh, because the Dauntless Avenger exiles when it dies. I was like, where's my spirit? Where's my 1-1 spirit? Well, if they attack with a Haunt Drifter, they actually leave themselves open more than they'd like to. They have so many cards in exile, though. Like, they literally have an additional hand in exile right now. Zombie just attacks whenever it helps me get damage in. Doesn't always happen. But when it happens, it's good. We have several flyers specifically for the situation we're in. Alright. Yep. I've shown several Flare of Faiths, so they're scared. Alright. Well, it looks like we drew all the lands, and they have more late game potential than we do. If we block with a Woken Demon as well, we actually lose the... They just kill the Woken Demon, we're back where we started. So we're just blocking with Morning Patrol. Uh, they have so much card advantage. And we just keep drawing lands. Alright. We do have 25 health, so we have time. But... They have Donhart Mentor, they have Hook Haunt Drifter, they have enough resources. So, they will win in time, but... Yeah, I just need to stick to the Siege and Slummy Clock. I played that poorly at the end there. There were several turns that I could have done more properly, kept the Siege Zombie around. I forgot that... Yeah, I should have res that Siege Zombie that one turn. Alright. I am blocking the 2-2. I am not scared of a trick. And now they're even life gaining their way out of the situation. And they have enough mana open to bring back a card. Which, if they bring back the duel for dominance, I'm in a, they just take out the last threat I have. Well. Alright. So the play is I let them duel for dominance. I sun gold barrage in response. Um... I could Morning Apparition attack. It kills the Hook con I think I'd do this, but it's not going to end well. Like, we're trying to do that point of damage in time. Alright. This allows our other flyers through when we draw them. So now we expect a duel for dominance on Catalan Cavalry, and that's when we use a Sun Gold Barrage. Oof. Because, yeah, they need to use a creature that has more than four health, which is the one positive. So the dual four dominance, I get a trade with my Senegal Barrage, but still in a bad spot because of the Dawnheart Mentor. And they even have a crawl from the cellar for their other werewolf. Yep. 
we take it. And then they duel for dominance to make it bigger, and that's when we single barrage it. But we're still in a losing position right now. We drew lands, and we don't have disturbed triggers in this deck, so... Just the way things go. Alright. Well, if we draw another land, it's... Oh, it's already night. Well, I think that's game. They now have Dawnheart Mentor and Untamed Pup triggers. I have to block an insect, I think. I'm going to no block, let them pump up, and then next turn I pump, they pump up more. They're going to Coven now. They should have. I feel like they should have done the plus one, plus one count. Unless they have another play this turn. But yeah, just show that... There was no block that was good for me. It makes Dawnheart Mentor. And we drew only lands. Ten lands. I mean, I guess... Yeah, no, no, no. We went through enough of the deck, so ten lands makes sense. We played poorly. Alright, is there any way I live this turn? Two, three, four, five, six, seven. No. I die this turn. I can make it look like I live. I can make it make them possibly make a misplay. But like literally they just bump anything and that's game. Yep. Ah, oh well. We got 3 wins. I have to be happy with that. But uh, Almost makes me want to go down to 15 lands with some of these decks. But yeah, I think the problem there Well, we have removal, we didn't have... Like, we only had five removal spells, which sounds like, oh, five is more than enough. Not in this format. In addition, we only have so much double value. We have Can't Stay Away as double value. We have Search Party Captain and two Aesthetic Awakeners as double value. That's it. Um, Breach Survivor, I guess, is double value, but, like, we were basically an aggressive deck without aggression. Like, we only had so many um, creatures on... Like, yeah, so we have Lunark Veteran. Stack Awakeners, Calgrove Witch, and Seed Zombie. This is our entire early game curve for creatures. That's what went wrong this game. But we went three wins still. That's still a thousand gems and two packs. So I'm happy. I would be more happy if we got more, but I'm happy. Everyone, thank you so much for watching. I hope you all have a wonderful day.